My name's Liam and I work for the charity Bug Life. Today I'm going to talk to you about sapless invertebrates um, and the ecology um, and management of wood decay habitats. So the word saproxylic um, comes from the Greek word sapros, which means decayed, um, and xylem, which means wood. So saproxylic um, invertebrates are species that are dependent upon dead or decaying wood uh, at some stage of their life cycle or they're dependent upon wood inhabiting fungi or other saprocytic organisms. Uh, but it also um, extends to bark associated species as well. And there are around 2,000 invertebrate species in the UK that are considered uh, saprocytic, uh, which includes some of our rarest and most threatened invertebrate species. So with these 2,000 different species means that there's 2,000 different lifestyles going on. Um, so our saprocytic invertebrates can be um, detritivores, they can be fungivores, they can be predators, scavengers, parasitoids, um, and show various types of symbiosis as well. The vast majority of our saprozylic uh, invertebrates within the UK are either beetles uh, or flies, but there are an assortment of other insects as well uh, that are considered saprozylic, things like moths, bugs, thrips, uh, bees, wasps, and ants. Uh, and there are also some um, non-insects as well, so things like spiders, mites, pseudoscorpions, and nematodes. And it's also important to note that a large number um, of other invertebrates um, and also vertebrates like um, bats and birds that live in dead um, and decaying trees but don't necessarily use them for their own nourishment in the same way a saprozylic uh, species would. And the living tree is really important to saprozylic uh, invertebrates um, for it is the living tissues um, of these trees that generate the wood which ultimately decays and creates um, those habitats that our saprozylic species need. And there are a number of important features of a living tree that are particularly valuable for saprozygic invertebrates. And these include things like uh, heart rot, um, so the decay of the, the heartwood, uh, wood mold uh, at the base of hollow uh, trunks and step stumps. Uh, we've got dead attached limbs, cavities of various sorts, uh, rot holes, uh, sap runs and slime fluxes, uh, the bark, so aging, flaking or loose bark is valuable. Uh, associated fungi, uh, decaying underground roots, um, and woodpecker holes. These are all really valuable features uh, of a living tree for our saprozylic invertebrates. And this is like an artist representation of a sort of ideal veteran tree for, for wildlife, and it shows a number of those features that are valuable um, to our saprozylic invertebrates. So you can see um, on this tree that there's sort of uh, dead attached limbs, uh, there's this fungi, there's hollow cavities at the base of the trunk, uh, there's rot holes, there's fallen uh, dead limbs, um, and there's some sort of aging and flaking loose bark, uh, and a variety of other, other features as well. So going through a few examples of these um, important uh, features of living trees, uh, the first of which is uh, heartwood decay. So, so these are uh, columns of decay uh, within the heartwood or the ripe wood of the tree. And this is the single most important sort of wood decay resource for, for our invertebrates. Uh, and most saprozygic invertebrates rely upon fungi or other microorganisms um, which break down um, the, the wood into more digestible materials or they feed either directly or indirectly on these fungi or other microorganisms. Uh, and heart, heart wood uh, rotting fungi um, are sort of ecosystem engineers. They're keystone species within the environment and they create um, conditions um, that um, a number of our saprozygic invertebrates um, rely upon. And interestingly, um, you get different invertebrate faunas associated with different types um, of hardwood decay. So um, white rotted hardwood um, has a different invertebrate fauna in comparison to brown or red rotted uh, hardwood as well. And Cosnard's uh, neckwing beetle is one example um, of a species that's associated with hardwood uh, decay. This is an endangered species within Britain and is considered globally rare. Within Britain is known uh, from only two populations, uh, one of which is in the Wye Valley and another one uh, on the west of Six Downs. Um, and the larvae of this species uh, develop within uh, cavities um, in uh, white rotted uh, hardwood of ancient beech trees. And another is the uh, oak uh, So this is an endangered uh, species um, known in Britain only from uh, Windsor Forest, and it develops exclusively um, in uh, the trunks and main boughs of oak trees uh, that are infested with uh, red rot. 
uh, and its larvae are actually predatory of the larvae of um, the hairy fungus beetle, uh, which then goes on to feed on the mycelium of the chicken of the woods fungus. So it's a species that's um, dependent um, upon another species uh, that feeds on fungi. So another really valuable habitat for saprocytic invertebrates is uh, wood mold. So this is where um, that sort of white rot or brown rot um, breaks down um, and composts into this sort of soil-like material called wood mold. Um, and this is basically the end product um, of the hollowing um, of the inside of the tree by, by fungi. Uh, and, it's, and this wood mold accumulates um, in the bottom uh, of these hollowed out cavities and, and is considered our rarest sort of wood decay habitat. And it's considered our rarest wood decay habitat because uh, if you can imagine trees have got to become sufficiently old in order to develop um, enough uh, dead wood and then sufficient time has got to pass then for fungi to break down this dead wood and then the products of that to become composted into this wood mold material. And as it's such a rare habitat, it supports some of our rarest um, species within Britain. Um, and these include species such as the Royal Splinter uh, Cranefly, which is known globally from just two sites in the world, uh, one of which is the Windsor Forest. Uh, and the species that are reliant upon uh, this wood mold uh, particularly favour the sort of com constant temperature and humidity you get within the, the sort of safety uh, of these hollow cavities in, in, the, in the trunk of the tree. So the violet click beetle is probably um, our flagship species for wood mold habitat. Uh, it's an endangered species um, in Britain known only from Windsor Forest and two areas in the North Cotswolds. And it's believed to be uh, one of the final specialist wood decay invertebrate species to colonize a tree. Uh, and this species is predatory on other invertebrates uh, within uh, wood mold uh, in hollow beech uh, and ash trees. And another habitat uh, that's valuable to our saprocytic invertebrates are rot holes. So these are small, smaller cavities in the trunk um, and in the branches in which sort of uh, debris and rainwater accumulates. Uh, and these are often um, open um, to the elements. So they offer very different conditions from those um, cavities um, inside um, hollow trees. Uh, and they, they're particularly favoured um, by flies that pre prefer the sort of moist, moist conditions. Uh, and these rot holes develop as a consequence of branch damage, uh, which provides a, an access point really for heart rot fungi to, to get into the tree. Um, and then the fungi combined with uh, invertebrates and just a physical breakdown of the, of the decaying wood um, manage to enlarge these rot holes. So why should we conserve our saprozoic invertebrates? So firstly, they are among the most threatened um, invertebrate group uh, within Europe. They're also um, really valuable to us because uh, some of the species are so specific in their habitat requirements and so dependent um, upon centuries um, of trees being present in the same locality that their presence um, are, is a really good indicator of habitat quality uh, and also continuity as well of our woodland environments. And by breaking down uh, dead wood, they help to free up uh, nutrients and minerals that have been locked up in that wood, so that once again making it available to the tree. Uh, so they're effectively prolonging uh, the life um, of our ancient and veteran trees. So what do our saprozylic invertebrates need? Um, so they need a diver diverse age structure um, amongst our trees. So um, they require um, obviously lots of uh, ancient and veteran trees. Um, to, support, to provide the uh, deadwood habitat that they need. But we also, they also need the younger trees, which will become uh, the future uh, veteran trees. They also need a sufficient number of trees in order to ma maintain viable populations. There are many require open grown trees, um, and that's because uh, open grown trees just develop larger. Um, they tend to develop more, more habitats and more uh, wood decay uh, features. And connectivity is really important. So our saprozoic invertebrates are often poor dispersers and they have trouble colonizing new habitat. So um, being able to move around the site and well connected um, ancient or veteran trees is really valuable as well. Many of our saprozoic invertebrates um, need um, pollen and nectar as adults. So access to blossom is really important. So they need the nectar, which is used as uh, energy uh, rich food. And they also need pollen, which is uh, protein rich and helps with egg production. So flowering trees and shrubs um, are by far the most important um, sources, uh, but other plants as well, other flowering plants are also um, important. So some examples include hawthorn, sallow, uh, holly, privet, rowan, uh, crabapple, 
Wild Pear, Gail the Rose, Bramble, Hogweed and Angelica. So what can we do on site to uh, make them more valuable for our Sapnose Alec invertebrates? Uh, what we need to do, we need to ensure that we've got a supply of both young and mature trees to, uh, to provide uh, future veterans. We need to retain trees that are showing um, some of those um, decay features that I mentioned previously um, and obviously conserve these and do nothing to damage them. We need to maintain as many of these veteran trees as possible and allow them to age and die uh, naturally. We need to encourage open grown trees uh, which develop larger butts and trunks um, and have more uh, hardwood decay at an earlier age. And we need to reduce um, site fragmentation by promoting um, trees that will become our future uh, veterans um, or lands between uh, existing sites. So this can be by uh, tree planting um, or we can just encourage uh, natural uh, regeneration. And we need to keep um, as much dead wood on site uh, as possible and preferably uh, all Where of it. An age gap exists between uh, ancient, and trees, and ancient trees and younger trees that will become our future trees. 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 Um, the way we do um, ensure that we don't. So this is a technique where we work on trees multiple are trees all at the same time, uh, so ensure that we expose them to bacteria um, and fungi uh, that we decay the habitat for our sap uh, and So it's just a, a way of need to of retain the same system, I suppose, and get in your ancient trees earlier than you would naturally. So if a tree should know, should never be carried out on existing ancient or veteran trees, as these already have the features of our sap rosalic, but our sap rosalic invertebrates need. Uh, and it should just be seen as a as a last resource, really, because we don't want to intentionally damage trees if we can if we can help it. Uh, but pollarding is a is a good traditional method um, in order to close up um, the generation gap. It's also important to remember that trees do not exist in isolation, so the environment around them uh, can be crucial to their welfare, uh, particularly um, the way we manage our grasslands around um, our ancient trees is really important. So the the improvement of grasslands through reseeding or the application of fertilizers, herbicides, fungicides, etc., uh, can be detrimental um, to our trees and the saprosalic invertebrates that rely on them. So, in, inorganic uh, fertilizers are known to disrupt uh, mycorrhizal fungi that are important to trees, uh, making them uh, more susceptible to stress, uh, meaning that they, they might die at a, at a younger age. Plowing also damages the roots of trees. Um, and also uh, interferes with the mycorrhizal fungi. So in an ideal situation, you should um, avoid the use of uh, inorganic fertilizers um, and avoid sort of plowing or reseeding um, of grasslands um, near um, ancient trees. Where a site has a long history of grazing, whether that's by sheep or cattle or, or deer, we want to look to sort of maintain those traditional grazing regimes uh, as long as they don't uh, interfere uh, with the floral resources um, that are available. So we want to ensure that there's pollen and nectar resources available to our saprosilic invertebrates uh, when they need it. So we might need to uh, re reduce um, grazing uh, between the months of, sort of April and September or avoid cutting um, of meadows between that period or sort of look to retain or plant up um, blocks of flowering trees or shrubs. Uh, we want to avoid supplementary feeding of livestock uh, where possible because um, the dung is enriched and that can in, then enrich the soil and interfere with the fungal communities, um, which our trees are dependent upon. Uh, and avermectins um, and other types of wormers uh, within, within the dung of livestock um, can also um, affect um, the soil um, and soil invertebrates and dung beetles and other things as well. So we want to avoid that, that whenever possible. So to summarize, saprocytic invertebrates are among our rarest and most threatened species. They require good populations or of ancient or veteran trees. And management should aim for a large number of trees and a large number of ancient or veteran trees in particular um, within fairly close proximity. Uh, so we've got a good connectivity and they should be um, of different ages as well to ensure we've got that continuity um, of habitat.